I'm Dr. Jay Lospader. I'm the chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital and at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. I see a huge variety of patients. So in ophthalmology, we see patients from children all the way to the, the very elderly. So we see a, a huge variety. The main conditions that I treat are cataracts, corneal diseases such as corneal scars, corneal infections, degenerations of the cornea like keratoconus, uh, patients who have problems in the front of the eye like, like a pterygium which is a growth on the surface of the eye, also patients with dry eyes and other inflammations around the eye like a very common condition called blepharitis. There's so many exciting things going on in ophthalmology. The, the technology that we use is tremendous and it's constantly advancing. So there are new techniques in terms of diagnosis of disease, a lot of new ways of treating disease, whether that's through various surgical procedures or new medications that we now have available to treat eye disease. So it's a very exciting time to be in ophthalmology. The great thing about coming to MedStar Georgetown for Ophthalmology is that we do have excellent clinicians in our department, so you will be getting the top people in whatever subspecialty of ophthalmology that uh, requires care. But I do think that we work very hard to provide that personal touch to our patients. Our staff is outstanding. We're very picky about the staff that we hire, and I think our, our patients find that, that satisfaction with being cared here. My philosophy with patients really involves two things. One, making sure that they get the best possible state-of-the-art care, but at the same time to have a, a personal touch. Uh, we don't want to just have patients rushing in and out of the office. We want to spend time to, to get to know them and treat them like people. A cataract is a haziness that develops within the lens of the eye. There are a variety of things that can cause it. Most commonly, they develop in people as we begin to get older, but uh, there are a number of other things that can cause cataracts as well. Now, because a cataract is present, that doesn't mean that you have to have surgery for it. We start thinking about the possibility of a cataract operation when the cataract is interfering with things that the patient needs to do or wants to do. So if it's causing the vision to become blurry, we'd start thinking about surgery. Some patients instead have developed problems with glare, halos around lights, light sensitivity, another reason we might start thinking about doing surgery. But the, just because there's a cataract, that does not mean you have to have surgery for it. The cataract surgical procedure is a very advanced technology. Uh, it's done just with numbing drops, so there's no injections or needles that are needed. And what we do is use an ultrasound to break the cataract, to break the patient's lens up into very small pieces that are then removed from the eye. We then insert a new artificial lens through the same very small incision. It's done through an incision that's about two and a half millimeters in size. We put a new lens that we can fold through that small incision and then open it up in the eye and that's what gives the patient a great outcome in terms of their vision. As far as what to expect during cataract surgery, uh, the, there's no discomfort because the eye is, is numbed up with numbing drops and through some anesthetic that we can place inside the eye. Most patients also have some sedation that they're given through an intravenous line to help relax them for the procedure. It's a very quick surgery. For most patients, it's a 20 to 25 minute from start to finish, so it's very quick. Uh, most patients are partially awake, partially doze off, but the comfort level is excellent. Postoperatively, patients do terrifically. For most patients, on the first day after the surgery, they're already experiencing a huge improvement in their vision and then continues to improve over the next few weeks as their vision uh, gets better. Well, one of the, the fortunate things that we have now is that there are a variety of treatments that are available for patients with dry eye. 
and that can vary from lubricants like artificial teardrops or lubricating ointments that are available over the counter to some prescription drops that we now have that are anti-inflammatories and allow the eye to produce more tears. In addition to that, there's some nutritional supplements that have been proven to be of benefit in patients with dry eye. And we sometimes also will do a minor procedure where we can put in little plugs in the tear drainage canals so that whatever tears the patient is producing or put in via a drop will stay in the eye much longer than it would otherwise. So we have a lot of options available to us today. Well, there, there are a number of conditions that can cause red eyes. Obviously, it's a very common problem that patients experience. It can be allergies, it can be dry eye, it can be a very common condition called blepharitis. Sometimes it can be a reaction to eye drops that patients are using. But there are treatments available for all of those things. Uh, whether it's a medication by mouth, whether it's a drop, sometimes we'll do some local treatments to the eyelids to help uh, out with blepharitis. But yes, there's almost always something that we can do to reduce patients who have a lot of problems with red eyes. LASIK surgery is a procedure that's done to reduce either nearsightedness or farsightedness that patients may have. It's a terrific procedure in terms of the outcome. The percentage of patients who are able to see 20-20 without glasses after LASIK surgery is in the, the mid-90%, so the results with it are outstanding. It's done, it's a very quick procedure. Uh, it's done with numbing drops only. And what's done is a laser is used to reshape the cornea so that the cornea can then focus, the, the image that's coming into the eye can then be focused to the proper part on the retina instead of being out of focus like it is in someone who's either nearsighted or farsighted. Most patients, the large majority of patients after LASIK surgery have excellent vision. They're at the point that they no longer need glasses or contact lenses, which is, of course, the goal of the procedure. Uh, patients who are in their 40s or above, if they have LASIK surgery done for both eyes to get excellent distance vision, will need to use reading glasses as everyone in their 40s and above need to use. Uh, there is a technique that we often will do called monovision LASIK, where we correct one eye for reading, one eye for distance, and for the vast majority of people that combination works great, and then you don't need glasses in any situation. There is surgery available for farsightedness, and that traditional LASIK can treat farsightedness. Now, for patients whose only problem is that they need reading glasses, there isn't a LASIK procedure specifically for that, but we do have the option of monovision, where we can, with the laser, make one eye a little bit nearsighted so that people can then read with that eye. So that's certainly an option that's available with LASIK surgery for people whose only problem is that they need reading glasses. Keratoconus is a condition in the cornea where the cornea, which is the clear tissue in the front of the eye, becomes progressively thinner and steeper. And eventually with time, uh, you get scarring in the area that's becoming thinner. And what that does to the vision is it becomes progressively blurrier as time goes along because the patients get more and more astigmatism and often to the point where they have a larger amount of astigmatism than can be successfully corrected with either glasses or contact lenses. As far as treating keratoconus, traditionally what's been done is that patients have been placed in hard contact lenses to try to correct much of the astigmatism that the keratoconus causes. The problem is that although contact lenses do improve the vision, they don't affect the course of the disease. Keratoconus is a condition that becomes progressively worse with time. The cornea continues to deteriorate over the years. One of the really exciting developments is that there is now a surgical procedure that's available 
that can stop the progression of keratoconus. And we do have that treatment. It's called corneal cross-linking, available here in our department at MedStar Georgetown. In fact, we're the, the only location within the District of Columbia that's offering this treatment. And what cross-linking does is stop the keratoconus from getting any worse. So wherever the patient is at that point, it will freeze it so that we know at a minimum that they're not going to deteriorate over the years, which is huge. In addition to that, a fairly large percentage of patients will get improvement in the shape of the cornea as a result of the cross-linking treatment. So what I tell patients is that I can almost guarantee that we will stop it in its tracks and we have a good chance that we can make their cornea better through this new cross-linking treatment that we now have available. So there, there's no connection between LASIK and keratoconus. A very, very small percentage of patients who have had LASIK, and we're talking 1 in 5,000 to 1 in 10,000, can over the course of many years develop a condition in the cornea that looks similar to the way keratoconus looks, but it's not actually keratoconus. The good thing about this, two good things about that. One is when this rare condition occurs, it can also be treated through corneal cross-linking, the same treatment that we use to treat keratoconus. And our methods for screening for patients who are at risk of developing that with LASIK surgery are much, much better than they were 15 or 20 years ago. So the few cases that we do see tend to be patients who were treated many years ago. It's exceedingly rare now because of the, the improved screening that we have that patients would develop that condition. Well, corneal transplants are done for a variety of diseases of the cornea. There can be a patient who has a scar in the cornea, whether from a previous injury or a previous infection. There are a variety of genetic conditions that occur in the cornea that can either cause it to become swollen, hazy, cause scarring. Those are all patients who might have a corneal transplant. Patients who have keratoconus that progress to the point that they can no longer wear contact lenses are candidates for corneal transplants. So there are a variety of conditions that we do transplant surgery for. And the surgery can be done in several different ways. Traditionally, what's done in a corneal transplant is that the entire center part of the cornea is removed and a cornea from a donor is stitched into place. And that's still done for some of the conditions that we, that we do corneal transplants for. We now, though, have a, a new technology where we can do a partial transplant. So in certain conditions of the cornea, particularly where there's a deterioration of the cells on the inner surface of the cornea. We now have a technique where we can remove just that disease layer and replace that just with the layer from a donor. And that offers a lot of advantages in terms of speed of recovery, uh, lack of stitches in place that can lead to complications. So that's been a real advance in the field over the last few years. Well, the, the advantage of coming to MedStar Georgetown for your eye care is that we have an outstanding group of clinicians in the department. We have state-of-the-art technology for both diagnosis of disease and treatment of disease. We have all the resources of the rest of the medical center for patients who might need multidisciplinary care. But we also have the personal touch in our department. Our staff and our physicians really go out of their way to make sure that every patient realizes that they're important to us.